Okay, so these are some stencils right here. These are all, you know, store-bought and they're paper. I think these, these are, um, they came as a kit. Um, these are Faber Castell. Um, you know, just really nice, but I, I usually like to make my own, but in any case, whatever you have, you know, you can use. And uh, so I think on this side, I'm just gonna show some different uh, effects of stencils and how you can make some shapes. I also recently bought, I went to a um, rummage sale and I bought a puzzle. And so here's a puzzle piece. And I'm just going to see how that works. Now, there's nothing on the paper right now, so it's very receptive. Um, and I, I am using glazes, so for that reason, uh, it's kind of a, a good first layer. If I want to put that down, I know it's going to go down pretty well, and I can try to overlap things. So put some more of that red down. This is quinacridone red. Here's my cleaned off brayer, but first I need to mix it with palette knife. There we go. So with this guy, I actually want them to be backwards, so I'm gonna I'm going to brayer this side. I'm not gonna brayer the whole thing. This part of it. Okay, so there's that. You can see that like underneath on that freezer paper, there's not a whole lot on there, so that wouldn't really be a very good translation of the stencil. So now I can place it down here, anywhere. Just find out where the paint is. Let's see, maybe I'll go off to the corner like this, like that. All right, put this down. I think you have to sometimes press a little harder on it. Some of this. So it's experimenting to see what's gonna work the best. put tissue paper down like this, you can soak up some of that excess.
Okay, so I can lay this down just like this, um, just about anywhere. But kind of thinking a little bit about placement, just why not, right? It doesn't hurt to do that. And then even though this was cut from the sky, let's see, how was this cut? Like this. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get some sort of a line here. And you know, a lot of people will say, how do I get a really nice um, solid line? And this would be my way to do it. And you know, the paint underneath is wet, so it's not even the ideal time. It would be a little bit better if it were super dry. But on the other hand, um, you, know, you can work with it. Okay, so now we've got, also we've got an opaque, so that's kind of a good thing because we've got a lot of transparency here. So now here's some opaque and you just kind of hold this down and kind of gently because again, it's wet paint underneath. But if you want a solid line, you know, you, you can do it. You just have to figure out the best way to do it. And um, I kind of like to do it this way with uh, making my own stencil. It's really fun to make your own too because they're one of a kind. They're really personal, obviously. You get to choose your own shapes. And you know, once you put it down, it doesn't have to be all solid. You can peel it back like that. Okay, so then take this off and then take this guy off. There's a really nice line. So right now I've got, you know, a lot of warm and just a little bit of cool. So proportionally, that's kind of a nice feeling. It's very clear that this painting is more predominantly warm than cool. It's also predominantly mid-tone. If you were to look at this in black and white, there's just a tiny bit of black. And then I uh, don't have any really light lights yet. Okay, so another thing we could do is take a pigment stick. And so I'm gonna grab kind of a light one, even white, almost white. How about an off-white? Okay, this is neutral white. Um, and this is a pretty big, a big one. This is the RNF pigment stick, and you can see it's half gone. You can also see it's got a, um, a skin on it. It's kind of hard as a rock right now. So what you have to do is you can either take a paper towel and just kind of skim off a little bit of that hard edge, which is usually what I do. Because I don't want to be too heavy handed with it. I really just want to get enough skin off so that I can be, so you can see the skin here, um, like this. I turn it and you can see it peeling away. I don't need um, to uncover the entire tip of this. I just need a little bit, so there we go. Then you just need to have some non-absorbent paper. Really anything will do. You can use wax paper, freezer paper. I happen to have a little bit of palette paper here. It's kind of left over from something else. So I can take that, just draw something. What don't I have? Um, I don't have any lights. I have circles, I have curves. I have some rectilinear, but not a lot. So I might just do a straight line on this because I don't really have anything too rectilinear. And I might want to make it super juicy because I really like the way that looks. So um, set that down. And then, you know, placement, a um, little bit of an angle, put it here. Gentle touch because it's wet over wet. And this mark is uh, very unusual. Can't really get it any other way except by doing this method, which happens to be a monoprint kind of elegant. You can juice it up again and continue that mark because I feel like it needs to be a little bit longer. Let me just um, get a little thicker on the bottom here. Take the handle of this and there. 
I do like to apply paint with a palette knife because um, you can get a really nice thick uh, quality like this. Kind of just sits there on the top. So there's thick and thin. Still related to the colors and um, by doing this notice I'm obliterating um, what's underneath uh, in that there was you know texture, there's pattern, um, there's the transparency but now this is opaque. Just has a really nice feeling because it's so different and uh, make the shape a little bigger. Kind of blend them together. So thick and thin. Cool and warm. Curvilinear. I mean there's some rectilinear here from that stencil. There's a little bit there but um, I do like line so maybe what I'll do is Get out some crepe paws. I like crepe paws. This is my bag of crepe paws. It's just um, it's labeled and kind of a hodgepodge in here, but um, I don't want it to stand out too much. I want it to be kind of subtle, so I'm looking for subtle colors. Uh, maybe some white would be nice, even. Here's some white, and I've got like a pale peach. I've got a little bit of a cool, and can't see them very well, but you know, that's what I have right there. so many choices to make. What to keep and what to get rid of. And I might make another stencil because I really don't like the way that line is. So cut another stencil. All right. So when you, you know, you, you put something in there and you don't like it, um, regardless of what stage you're in, you can always kind of obliterate it. So um, I can do something like this. And Master Meister or silicone tool. Take this guy. And it's a very pale, cool green. And it doesn't mean I want to obliterate everything, so maybe just some of it. Whoops, stuck to my pink area. Okay, so now I need to smooth this out because it got all covered. Go thick again. I really like this fast mat. It's pretty cool. I actually feel it already getting kind of tacky. So now I've gone light over a little bit darker. That's sort of a cool shape. And it's good to overlap, so I'm gonna catch the edge of that green.
Okay, one more thing I want to do on this one because I've come in the next day now and it's, you can see this is the fast mat and it's actually, this is really thick right here. I think what I want to do is I'm going to mix up some of this um, ultramarine blue. Again, it's fast mat and I've come in the next day just so that you know, like this is, um, had a chance to set up very nicely. And I'm gonna start with making a purple, but then I want to make it more of a grade purple. So I'll add some yellow to it. I had Hansa Yellow Medium on my palette yesterday. So here are those colors. And I wanna just put one more element over this painting because I'm trying to like go for, um, look at the big, the big shapes as well as um, the negative shapes, which are what's around the big shapes. And like this thing here is not connected to this, although this line does tie these two things together, but I want one more element that's gonna tie them together. So I'll take my palette knife and I'm gonna start with the yellow and add some red gonna take some mixing to get just that right value and just that right color that I'm going for and I don't really even know what that is yet I might need to add some white I might need to add some black um, here's kind of an orangey color I kind of like that but I don't want it too overly saturated so because this is orange I can add a little bit of blue which is the complement and that desaturates it so now it's not quite so um, bright orange Kind of like that. It's not too bad. I like that. And I'm going to really have this be very washy. I'm going to just try something over this. I'm going to actually kind of pour it, see what happens. That's not bad. Okay. So now um, we talked about the the one-to-one -one Galkid Gamsol, and that's what I have right here. See, it's got the label on it. It's kind of a messy bottle, but anyways, it's nice and liquid. And I want it to be very washy. So. I'm gonna put a puddle there, and then I'm gonna grab a brush. Here's the brush I used yesterday. It's just a bristle brush, you can see. And um, again, a lot of this, I want a lot of this um, medium here, and I want it to be very washy. So I don't need a lot of paint in there. I'm hoping that this has set up enough so that it's not going to disturb that layer but it's kind of an unknown because it's only been you know sitting overnight but I'm okay with experimenting with it I'm gonna get this off of here so that I can tilt the paper tilt the board but I want to keep the borders protected so again this is that multimedia artboard Okay, so there's that. Because this painting, again, it's only dried overnight and I don't want to disturb the under layers. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is actually pour it. Uh, I'm gonna mix this color into this um, container here. Really want it to be, um, you know, nice and juicy. And I started on my palette paper, but you know, if you, if you wanna pour it and then I wanna dilute it. So dilute it some more, the 50-50. you're going to have a lot less chance of disturbing those lower layers um, if you pour it. So here I'm going to take this again. Borders are still protected with tape and uh, I kind of want to just, I don't really know what's going to happen obviously, I never do, but you now there's the pour and I'm not, I just really want to see what happens when I uh, tilt the board and let that flow a little bit. It's kind of cool because I knew what would happen is um, this one shape here, this yellowish shape is going to, it's, it's serving as a glaze, right? And um, I have some control over where it goes by tilting the board. So maybe if I go like that, and then maybe I want it to go, maybe that I don't really necessarily want this to come off the edge. I kind of like those strip marks. so. I'll tilt it the other way and send the dribbles back. I don't mind so much if it 
bleeds off the um, the top part. So maybe what I'll do I might just um, hmm, get the bulk of it. This does take a bit of control. Reminds me of what I did with watercolor a long time ago. And now at this point, you know, I don't I don't mind using the brush to just kind of help it along. Um, get some of that excess off. But I kind of like how that's uh, unified the surface. Okay, so now you can kind of see the effect of the pour on there. I like it, but you know, just because that's what you get when you pour something that's kind of random like that, you want to kind of, um, well, you want to just feel like it, that's not, you don't have to stop there. You can, you can keep working on this. So like here's some tissue paper, which is a great blotting material. And first of all, I want to get off the excess off the border because, I mean, there's a lot of paint there and um, I just want to blot that up. And you could use paper towel too, but I just happen to have this handy. Um, now I did kind of go on to the painting a little bit, but I want to just slightly let this float on top. I want that to be thinner. There we go. Take my brush and if you know it, it took off whatever amount that was and then I can put back some. I think I want to um, lift a little bit over here. Also change the value of that green. It went a little lighter, so kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna let that set up. I'm gonna take this tape off. Okay, so there's that up close. I can show it to you. So again, th that was a pour. But then even after I poured it, you know, there's, there's room for changing things with tissue paper, with um, paper towel, and even the brush. I came in and I, I had thick paint here. When I put this um, glaze over the top and poured it, because it has Gamsol in it, yeah, this had only been sitting overnight and it's really thick. So it eventually made that a little bit softer. And then when I took my brush, I was able to make a little bit larger area with that. So I think, you know, for now, I'm gonna let that sit.